can decide whether functions are linear, quadratic, or exponential. Okay, so look at this first one. Can you remember which parent this is? It is linear. Um, do you remember what the equation is for linear? Y equals? Yes, but for the parent, it's just X. Because the slope is 1 and the B is 0, right, for the parent. Okay, we'll talk more about that in unit 4. But for right now, we just want the parent, which is Y equals X. Good. All right, what about the middle one? What's the middle one? It is quadratic. Yes. Oops. Y equals X squared. Every time I try to say Y while I'm writing quadratic, I start writing Y in the middle of quadratic. Okay, Y equals X squared. So the quadratic is talking about the power on X, and also the linear is talking about this power on X, right? Okay, hey, what's the last one? Exponential. Exponential. Okay, this is the toughest equation. Yeah, y equals 2 to the x. So the exponential is talking about x being in the exponent. That's a lot of x's. Okay, so let's talk about some characteristics. Do you remember what the domain is for the linear? If we go forever in both directions and we don't lift all up our pencil, yes, it's all the real numbers. Is that the same with the range? It is the same with the range. Because the y's go forever in the positive and negative y direction. They are both 0, 0, both the origin. Good. Because that's our x and y intercept. They happen in the same spot for the linear parent. All right, what about for the quadratic? What about the domain? All reals. All reals because it goes forever to the left. Forever to the right, okay? All the real numbers. Oops, numbers, numbers with a B, numbers, not numbers. What about the Y? All real numbers greater than zero. Greater than, can it equal? If I look at this, yes. Okay, so it's Y values. greater than or equal to zero. All right, what about the x-intercept? Zero, zero, zero again. Don't forget your parentheses. What about y-intercept? Same thing. Just like linear, it happens in the same spot for the parent. Now, if I were to, like, add 5 right here, then it would like shift up a little bit, right? And it would be up here, and then it would be 0, 5, right? Okay, but it's not, so it won't be. All right, let's look at the exponential. What about the domain? Yep, all the real numbers again. You guys seeing a pattern? No? Yes? Okay, so it goes forever to the left, forever to the right. Okay, there's no breaks. Okay, greater than zero. Yes, so it's y values that are greater than zero. So this one is greater than or equal to. This one is strictly greater than because what we have on this graph is something called a horizontal asymptote. It's really fun to say because it sounds like you're about to swear, but you don't. You're just saying math vocab. Like, if you don't behave, I'm going to send your asymptote to the office. 
get your asymptote out of here. No, not funny? Well, that's what I'm saying. It sounds like you're going to swear and get in trouble, but then you don't because you're just saying math words. It's hilarious. If you said asymptote, no, you wouldn't get in trouble. It's, it's a loophole. Are you guys familiar with loopholes? Yes. Okay, well, this is a very dangerous conversation. We're going to get out of this right now. All right, so x-intercept. Do we have one? Are we ever touching the x-axis? No. No, because we have this horizontal asymptote right here that we approach but never touch. Okay, so this is none because of the asymptote. All right, what about y-intercept? Zero, one. Zero, one, good. Right there. So it's the only one that's not at the origin. Okay, questions for me so far? Okay. So guys, we're gonna meet some more members of the families today, but you will be able to tell by looking at the powers to which family these belong. So if I see this little X in the power, what do I automatically know his family is? What function type is he? Yeah, look at the parents, he's exponential. The little acorn does not fall far from the tree. All right, now we're going to do the usual suspects. So we'll have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, this part should be reviewed because we're just going to do input-output table. So I'm plugging it in. So I want g of negative 2, which is equal to 4 times 1 half to the negative two power. Okay, let's write them and then we'll put them in the calculator, okay? Instead of going back and forth. So g of negative one equals four times one half to the negative one power. g of zero equals four times one half to the zero power. I'll show you a calculator trick when we get there. g to the first, sorry, g of one equals four times one half to the first, and g of 2 equals 4 times 1 half squared. Okay, that was a lot. I'll give you a second to write it down. Some of you are fast. Math Ninja Assassin over here. Okay, I'm going to show you a calculator trick. All right, you ready? Yeah. So the first one we have to do the long way. We got to do four open parentheses times one half, one divided by two, close it, do the power caret, and then put negative two up there. Okay, and we get 16. So go ahead and write that in your table. Okay, now, instead of having to retype that whole thing, watch this. You can arrow up until it's highlighted in blue or whatever. Hit enter. And now if I go backwards, I can write over the negative 2 and put a negative 1 instead. That's even more red. Did you figure that out yesterday? No, I've known. I've just been making you do it the hard way so you would remember how to do it. Sorry. No. But you'll remember how to do it, right? Yes. Okay. So now I can do it again. So I arrow up, I hit enter, and then now I've got a negative in there that I don't want. So I can hit the little delete key, the del, get rid of the negative, and change the one to a zero. Boom. Oh, this is a Woody. Okay. Okay. All right, four, whoops, I don't have to do that. I can just go back up here. Enter, whoops, I don't want 44. I messed up, don't look at me. Don't look at me right now. 
All right, now I want the first power. And I get two. Okay, so I've showed you the trick. Now I'm going to write this stuff in my table. So this goes to 16. This is 8, 4, 2. What do you think the last one is going to be? One. One. You are correct, sir. Oh, yeah, good job. Okay. This is because we have a very special pattern here. What is happening in this table every single time? Okay, we're dividing by two. Divide by two. Now, what you need to know in this math class and pretty much any other math class you're going to take, if you're dividing, chances are you're going to have to change it into multiplication. Okay, so if I'm dividing by two, dividing by two, I'm going to change it into something equivalent, which is multiplying by what? One half, okay? This is because all of our function rules, all of our sequence rules are, de are defined in terms of multiplication rather than division, pretty much, okay? So we're going to change this to multiplying by one half, and that's as far as we got before. We just said that we had a multiplying pattern. Today we're going to name it. The multiplying pattern, it has a name. It is called a common ratio. Oops, that's too many lumps in my M. Common ratio. Okay, that's our pattern right up here. Common ratio. Okay, so like a ratio is like two to three, right? You could have two to three. Can't I also write that as a fraction, two to three? Yes. Okay, so it's basically like the common fraction we multiply by every time, okay? That's where that word comes from. So the name of our multiplying pattern is common ratio. Let's graph these points. So negative 2 goes to 16. That is all the way up here. Holy Hannah, way off the graph. Sorry about that. Negative 1 goes to 8. 0 goes to 4. 1 goes to 2. 2 goes to 1. Now, could we keep going, multiplying by 1 half? Yes. What's half of 1? Yeah, 0. 0.5. What's half of 0. 0.5? 0.25. So we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but we never actually get there. We just get a smaller and smaller fraction or decimal, okay? Because what is hiding right there is my favorite word to say, the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. Okay, we're not going to have to do a whole lot with it in this unit. You just kind of have to be aware that it's there. And don't ever touch it and don't ever cross it for an exponential. We'll do more with it when we get to our um, exponential unit in unit 7. Cool? Cool, cool, cool? Okay, flip it. All right, check out this power. We have the power. Okay. It's a power of one. So what do we know the family is? Linear. Linear. Okay. So usual suspects, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Plug them in. F of negative two equals... 3 times negative 2 minus 2. F of negative 1 equals 3 times negative 1 minus 2. F of 0 equals 3 times 0 minus 2. F of 1 is 3 times 1 minus 2. F of 2 equals 3 times 2. Minus 2. Okay, we're going to do a couple in the calculator to make sure we know how to do it, and then we're going to, like, stretch our brains with some mental math. Okay? So, 3, open parentheses. Negative 2, close them. 
Minus 2. This one's easy compared to the last one. Negative 8. If you don't want to retype the whole thing, you can do the arrow trick. Okay, and then just go back and change your negative 2 in the parentheses to a negative 1. Okay, everybody doing good with the calculator? Okay. So for the calculator, I got negative 8 and negative 5 on the first two. Now we're going to do mental math. What's 3 times 0? Zero? 0. Subtract 2. Negative 2. Okay, 3 times 1. 3. Subtract 2. 1. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. Take away 2. 4. All right, it's pattern time. What is happening every single time? It goes up by 3. So if we're adding 3 every time, that 3 has a special name. You know how we called the 1 half the common ratio? Mm -hmm. This one we're going to call a common difference. What? I will show you in two seconds. Common difference. Is it because you subtracted? It's, it's, okay. I'll show you. Give me, give me a minute. Okay, so if we kept this pattern going, we're going negative 2, 1, 4, what's next? 7, seven and then yeah. 10. Okay, now, if we do 10 minus 7, because difference means subtract, right? What's 10 minus 7? What's 7 minus 4? What's 4 minus 1? Do you see they all have the same difference in common? Mm -hmm. That's why it's called common difference. Okay, we just have to subtract um, the previous one from the current one. Because if you do 7 minus 10, you're going to think it's negative 3. You have to make sure you're going ba backwards when you're subtracting. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so it's called a common difference. It also has another name that we will talk more about once we get into our linear unit, which is unit four, and that is a constant rate of change. Constant, have you guys heard that before? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's associated with slope. All right, let's graph it. So negative two takes me to negative eight. Negative one maps to negative five. 0, negative 3, whoops, negative 2 I mean, uh, 1, 1, 2 maps to 4, 3 would go to 7, and so on. Connect it with a straight line, lay arrows on both ends because it goes forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Okay, now, really quick before we move on, look at this, boom, boom. Up three, right one. Up three, right one. Up three, right one. Up three, right one. You see the pattern in our graph? Yes. Every time we get one bigger for x, we go up three for the y's. Okay? This is our slope. It stays the same. That's why it's constant. That constant rate of change, that's our slope. All right, next one. Ooh, I forgot to name the pattern. I forgot to write it up here. This is a common difference. Sorry. What was the pattern on the one before this one? Common ratio. <laughs> All right. This is the weird one. Okay, so look at the power. The power tells us that this is quadratic. All right, usual suspects. Okay, plug them in. G of negative 2 equals G of negative 1 equals G of 0 equals G of 1 equals G of 2 equals. 
Now, I stopped writing at equals because we need to make sure that we have this negative. You see this one right here? I'm making it big and blue. Okay, so I'm going to put that on all of my output rules. One, two, three, four, five, all of them. Okay, that is the same as multiplying by a negative one. Okay, so I need that in there. Don't forget it. Next, I am squaring my input. So I'm taking my negative two and squaring it. Taking my negative one and squaring it. You must write it in these parentheses or you will get yourself all messed up. Okay, what's the last thing the rule tells me to do? Yeah, add one. Okay, do you see that I have two different negative signs going on? Yes. Okay. Now the one in the parentheses is getting squared, so we'll have a negative times a negative that makes a positive. And then we've got the blue negative that turns it back negative again. So we've got three negatives in the first two of them. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Let's put these in the calculator, make sure we got it. First negative, opposite of, open parentheses, negative two, close them, square it, add one. I got negative three. So now that I've got that done correctly, I can enter on it and then go back and change my negative 2 into a negative 1. And I get 0. Okay, go back. Change my negative 1 into a 0. I get 1. Okay, now I'm going to go back and change my 0. Whoops, I just deleted it. When I did it... It gave me all of these numbers, but they're backwards. Like for negative two, I apply. Um, for positive two, I got negative three. Yeah, you will. Okay, so let's talk about why. So you should get negative three. Zero. Zero. One. Okay, you should get zero and then negative three again. Do you guys want to talk about why? Okay, so what happens if you square a negative two? What do you get? Yeah, so this part's a four, right? So what's negative four plus one? Negative three? Yeah. Okay, now look down at the bottom one. What's 2 squared? 4. So what's negative 4 plus 1? Yeah. It's because whether you're squaring a negative 2 or a positive 2, you're getting the same thing. That's why they start repeating in our table. Cool? Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about the pattern. Now, we've talked about... A multiplying by the same thing every time pattern. That's a common ratio. We've talked about an adding the same thing every time pattern. A common difference. Are we doing either of those here? Hey guys, are we multiplying by the same thing or adding the same thing here? Well, we're obviously not multiplying, right? Okay, so let's check out adding, because it looks a little weird, but we're going to see if we can make it work. So, if I go from negative 3 to 0, what do I have to add? Okay, add 3, and then from 0 to 1? 1, and then from 1 to 0? Subtract 1, good, and then from 0 to negative 3? Subtract 3. So, we do not have a common first difference. Can we all agree on that? Yes. But it's a parabola, it's a quadratic with a power of 2, so let's look for a second difference. Okay, let's do it again. So from 3 to 1, what do we do? 
subtract 2. Good. What about from 1 to negative 1? Subtract 2. Subtract 2 from subtract. negative 1 to negative 3? It's pretty cool. Okay, so this special pattern right here where if we do it twice and we have a matching ones, that is a common second difference. Common second difference. And guys, the answer to the, why that, that happens is basically calculus, okay? If we take the second derivative of a quadratic, we get a constant. But right now, all you have to know is that if we do the difference twice, okay, and we have to do it twice because the power is 2, if we get the same thing, then it's quadratic. This is true of all of the quadratics we will see. Questions? No. Okay, let's graph it. Okay, I like to start in the middle with the vertex. Do you see that I have a high point here at 0, 1? That's where I like to start in the middle. That's my vertex, and then it starts to go down on either side. So negative 1 is at 0, 1 is at 0, negative 2 goes to negative 3, 2 goes to 3, negative 3, sorry. Make it nice and round, but not like a bell, okay? What I don't want is like any wingy dingy, like parabolas don't do that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, they also don't give me goal posts. If it goes straight up and down, it's not a function anymore. So it should be getting a little bit wider, a little bit wider the whole time. So don't give me a bell and don't give me goal posts. Ooh, yeah. All right, last one. Coming down the home stretch. So for the classification, we're asking for the function type. So there are two things we have to do here. We have to determine if it's a function, has to meet the definition of a function, relation where each input gets exactly one, one. output, okay? And then we're going to have to look for the pattern in the table to classify it. So first... Does each input have exactly one output? Yes. Yes, so is it a function? Yes. Yes. Okay, now we're going to look at the jumps. So from 3 to 5. Okay, from 5 to 7. Okay, from 7 to 11. Plus 4. Now it's something weird is happening here because look at my x jumps. From from negative 1 to 0, I have plus 1. And then from 0 to 1, I have plus 1. But what happened from 1 to 3? Plus 2. Plus 2. So I skipped over a number. What's in between 1 and 3? 2. 2. What's in between 7 and 11? 9. So do you see that if I go from 7 to 9, I'm still going plus 2. And from 9 to 11, I'm still doing plus 2. So what do you think? Common difference. Common difference, yes. So what type is this? Yeah, so which family is it in? Which? Linear. Linear. Yeah. If we graphed it, those points would all be on a line, which is another way to see, right? You can get a little baby graph and graph them. All right, do I have any weird jumps in my x's? No. No? Do each of my inputs have exactly one output? Yes. Okay, so it's a function. Let's check the output. What's happening? Dividing by 3. Okay, convert it to multiplying. You're... So close. One over three, multiplying by one third. So it's basically the reciprocal, right? The reciprocal of three. So we have a common ratio. So what type is this? Um, exponential. Exponential. 
All right, look at the next one. Do each of my inputs have exactly one output? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Now, am I multiplying by anything? No. Okay, am I adding the same thing every time? No. So if I don't have a constant first difference, I'm going to look for a common second difference. So I'm going to try doing it twice. So first time, it's plus 3, plus 1, minus 1. What about the second time? <laughs> from 3 down to 1, minus 2. And from 1 down to negative 1, minus 2. So I have a constant second difference. The second difference, is it common or common? Same. Okay, uh, so what type is it? Quadratic. Okay, last one. How can you tell? Okay, negative 3 has two outputs, so not a function. So if it's not a function, can it be one of these functions types? So it just starts with an R. Yep. A relation? Yep.